you shouldn't become a filmmaker. I don't know how many times I've heard someone say that to me in any type of form. If you ever do anything film related, you're probably going to hear those words from someone or in another form any point in your filmmaking journey. Let's start with what is the cost of becoming a filmmaker? How much money does it take to become a filmmaker? Most people think, well, you gotta get the knowledge. It starts with a theoretical. How do you do it? Well, you go to film school, right? No, you don't have to come to, you don't have to go to film school. Dan didn't go to film school. I chose to. You can. It's one way of doing it. It'll cost you about well, ten to $100,000 to do it. It's a decision you have to make. Are you self-motivated? Probably don't need to go to film school. You probably learn what you need to learn online. What about equipment? Hmm, do you got a phone? At least a decent generation iPhone? Well, I don't think you need equipment. You can make a short film, a feature film, any film, with an iPhone. Okay, so you don't need a camera. You don't need a good mic to start, okay? What about a budget? What do you really need to spend on a short film, on a feature film? Well, I don't know the minimum amount that you can spend on it because that's only something that you know. But I do know that we made our first feature film, Chlorine, for $500. And I'd say that's still a decently large budget um, for what can be done with if you use creativity outside of just the script and everything else. And now we get something that really does cost you a lot, and that's time. There's no quick way to learn filmmaking. It's something that you just have to pour your time into. But you don't have to if you don't want to do it seriously. You can just make a, a short film and grow up and look back at your short film and say, that was cool, I'm glad I did that and move on. It doesn't have to be something that you do for a career. So it does take a lot of time. But when people tell you it's going to take a lot of money, money that you don't have, that's not necessarily true. You can learn how to become a filmmaker by watching YouTube videos. Dan is living proof of that. You don't have to spend loads of money on a production budget. We've shown you that with the, the films that we've made, you don't have to have loads of money to do it. Just ask Dan how much he uh, spent on Sheep Theater. You don't have to do that. The, the equipment, you do not have to start with a good camera or a good mic. Start with something that is it's easy to fail with. Something that you're gonna learn failure and learn what not to do. You can use, they even have commercials about how you can use an iPhone to film, to film anything. And if you look at what's been done with an iPhone, with professional people, it looks good. What, and what that proves is it's not about how good of a camera you have. It's about filmmaking principles, knowing how to compose a shot, and just going for it. So you don't need all these things. People that tell you you shouldn't become a filmmaker because you don't have the money. No, that's not a good argument. You don't need money. You need to put effort in, and you need to know how to use that money wisely. All of which you can learn here on our channel and many other channels for free. So the cost isn't really that much, right? What about, the, what's the value? What are you getting by becoming a filmmaker, by making one short film possibly? Well, here's a few things. It's actually a skill. Knowing how to create an image that looks good is a skill to produce a concept from the theoretical to the practical to the actual physical film not only is it a skill but it is becoming more and more valuable as social media takes off and social media becomes more of a hub for marketing so it has value and it's becoming i would argue it's actually becoming more and more valuable uh, as I'm even giving you this message. The next value uh, of making film and making, uh, whether it be a short film or a feature film, is it, it, it really is a, a mental release of stress. Because having an idea, experiencing life, 
and having a, a venue of release and expression through that art is, is a very powerful way to relieve stress. Having a release like that is very valuable for your mental state. It can become the opposite, right? If you do do feature films or even short films, you do put a lot of focus on that. So on this, I'm not just going to say it's just you make films and you, oh my gosh, you just all your stress is just waft into the air. Oh my gosh, they just they just fly away. You make films and your brain, you have no stress. No, that's not okay. That's being a little crazy. Um, but there is a satisfaction to. Um, going through a powerful emotion and being able to express that. It's not just balled up inside, and, and that does have value. And the last thing is, it's fun. It's a blast. Um, I've made films for over a decade now, and it is, every project is a new opportunity and a new excitement. It's addicting. It's addicting. You just want to get. You just want to do another video, and you enjoy yourself, and it's fun. We're telling a story, and it, and it has some punch to it. It has a that feeling you get is just. It, it's so exciting, and it, it yeah, it fades with time. But it, it's right now. I could even even in the, the twelve features we're going to be doing for the channel. I'm just so excited to tell more stories. I can't wait. I can't wait to make more content for you guys. It's really fun. It's a blast. So the cost isn't that much. And there's a lot of value. There's a lot of upside there. So if that's the case, why are so many people telling you that you shouldn't become a filmmaker? Now, let's go into the who. Where, where can this doubt come from? Your family? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of other filmmakers that have been judged by their family for the decisions to become filmmakers. You know, things like, is this a joke? Is this serious? You just, you know, have playing around, having some fun, which you can do, right? Which the, f the fact that that's even a, an assumption uh, or even a derogatory um, idea in theory is sort of like, well, so what if it's fun? Friends? I'll never forget it. Um, Right when I thought I might want to start going to film school or getting serious about film, my friend basically sent me a link to, you know, okay, you're serious about doing film, blah, blah, blah. This is why you shouldn't do it. Oh, it's tough. It's uh, really competitive. Um, make sure you want to do it. It could cost a lot of money. It can cost a lot of time and effort. And I was like, man, it's like, what, what is this guy? Why does he want to tell me that I shouldn't? do film like it's seriously like it's not gonna it's not rewarding what, what's 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 the issue here and it was not that it was not rewarding it was that it was competitive very difficult to to set yourself apart a lot of people like to do this but you know if you're going to be successful you got to do this this and this and you could you could lose all your money and you could you could waste all your time and it was like oh my goodness maybe i you know i was like uh, i started to second guess it and and thankfully i didn't um, but you know th those type of messages like you shouldn't do it are can, can even come from your friends you never know um, okay family friends even random people I was on I was taking I was taking the train one day and there was this nice old lady next sitting next to me and we just started talking you know hey what do you do for school I'm doing film at DePaul DePaul University yeah you have any any minors or is, is, is that is that it like okay you can't just do film alone that's you gotta have something else right a random person, you know, a random person, anyone off the street. And, he, and here's a big one, anyone on the internet. Those are the people that are going to tell you you shouldn't make films. They're going to tell the people, I can't tell you how many comments we've gotten on our work saying, hey, you, you guys stink, uh, or just, you know, just attacking us and not our work, you know, and that's, that's tough, right? You shouldn't do this. Maybe you, just, maybe you should do something else. This isn't, this, this isn't your lane, you know, this isn't something you are that good at. You know, there's going to be a lot of people that tell you that. It's your friends, your family, uh, random people, and strangers on the internet, you know? Anyone could type a, a seven letters into a, a little box on YouTube, you suck, you know? And that can mean a lot to you. Yeah, everyone. That's the answer. Everyone. Everyone will tell you you shouldn't become a filmmaker. Why is everyone that could possibly be in your life possibly telling you to not become a filmmaker? 
Well, it's funny to note that half of the arguments are, it's not valuable, it's just a small thing, you just, it's sort of a joke, you know, it's more you just, hey, you have some fun. But the, the other side is the exact opposite. That other side of the argument is, it is so valuable and it is so competitive that you will never be able to make it. What's the dissonance between those two arguments? H how does the, both of those arguments make sense? And about people that are online telling you not to do this, there are people that will give you valid critique for your work. And, and you're gonna have to learn to fail, right? And to get critique um, on your project. But there will also be people that are just interested in getting you out of the way. They're gonna say, you know what? This person's onto something. I've even had professors at my film school that were teaching film specifically tell me that I shouldn't become a filmmaker, an independent filmmaker. With the plethora of, of voices telling you not to become a filmmaker, that you shouldn't become a filmmaker, uh, I do know from personal experience that all you really need is one person that you care about to give you the motivation to do it. While we were producing The Long Con, went to shoot, came back. I learned that my uncle had passed away, uh, my Uncle Jim. Um, we have used him in a uh, short film scene here. And it was tough because when I was deciding in that pivotal moment in my life what I, whether I should be a filmmaker or not or whether I should continue going, um, the excitement that my Uncle Jim gave me when I was talking about it was sort of all the motivation I needed to, to keep going and keep making stuff. And it's, it's sort of tough to think about, but uh, he wasn't even able, able to see my first feature film. And that's going to be one of the tough memories to get over in my life. But like I said, all it takes is one person that you care about to be on your side, to convince you and to motivate you to keep going and keep making films. I know that from personal experience. So if I am the only voice that's going to be here and tell you that, then that's how it is. You should definitely become a filmmaker because when you look at the, 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 what it costs and what it's worth, in my opinion, what do you have to lose?